There are a few final things for us to look at with factoring out the GCF. So let's look at this example. It's negative 8x minus 12. And let's take the same approach we've been using, which is looking at these two terms and thinking about what can we evenly divide out from both terms. Uh, the first term is a negative 8x. We have a variable. But the second term is a constant. It's this negative 12 with no variable. So for sure, we're not able to bring any x into the GCF because we don't have an x available to take from the second term. But we could divide the negative 8 and the negative 12 both by 4. So we can have a 4 for the GCF in front of parentheses. And thinking about what we would need to have inside the parentheses, we'll need a negative 2x and a negative 3. But what if you looked at these two terms that were negative and said we could divide out a negative 4? And that would leave in parentheses a positive 2x and a positive 3. Both ways are correct, I would say. We will see some situations in the future where you will want to find a negative number for your GCF. So this is what I want you to observe right now that on one side we factored out for the GCF a positive number and on the right side we factored out a negative number and when we factor out opposites the signs of the terms inside the parentheses also are opposites so when we change a positive 4 into a negative 4 the terms inside also had their signs changed from a negative 2x to a positive 2x and from a negative 3 to a positive 3. And we will see some examples in the future of this situation arising again. But let's look at it one more time with a different example, 6x minus 15. So let's find our GCF. The greatest common factor here would be the 3. So a 3 in front of parentheses, and inside the parentheses we will need 2x minus 5. Okay, so on the right side, Let's see what happens when we factor out for a GCF a negative 3. So the terms that we would need to have inside the parentheses, a negative 3 times a negative 2x would lead us to this positive 6x, and negative 3 times a positive 5 to equal this negative 15. And one more thing I want you to see we can do here is we can rearrange terms and this is maybe something you've done in the past but we can rearrange terms just as long as every sign that you see pluses and minuses you think of those as being attached to the term directly behind them so this is a negative 2x when I rearrange I still have a negative 2x and up here it's a positive 5 down here it's still a positive 5 so to go from this line to this line was just rearranging terms, moving them around, but see the same pattern where if our GCF has its sign changed, then the terms inside the parentheses also have their signs changed. So a positive 3 on the left is a negative 3 on the right. Inside the parentheses, a positive 2x on the left is a negative 2x on the right and a negative 5 on the left is a positive 5 on the right. Now all three of these expressions, they are all equivalent. They are all mathematically the exact same, and they all equal 6x minus 15. You need to understand, though, that by changing the sign of our GCF, we can change the signs of our terms inside the parentheses, and everything is still equal. It's still a legit move. We've maintained equality, and this is an idea that Again, it will show up in the future, so we want to see how it's working now. Okay, so here's a problem for you to try. And just to bring you back, what we're doing is looking at a problem like this and thinking, is there a GCF? Is there a common factor that we can divide out of both of these terms? Put that GCF in front of parentheses and figure out what terms we would need to have inside parentheses. So pause the video and take a few minutes to work this problem out and then come back to this screen and we'll look at the answer. This is the answer I've come up with. 4x is the GCF, so in factored form, this is 4x times this quantity, 8x squared minus 5. How about one more for you to try, one that's got 
x's and y's both and, and it has three terms so put the video on pause and take a few minutes to work this problem out come back and we'll look at the answer okay this is the answer I'm coming up with it's 4x y squared times this quantity 9x to the third minus 6y plus 11x those are some of the main ideas for factoring polynomials using the greatest common factor there's still a lot more to know about factoring polynomials the next thing to look at is factoring by grouping